I'm gonna be honest with y'all. I think uh, that old Simon Carroll is the best judge on America's Got Talent. Uh, I also think that all judges can be persuaded by the beginning of your judging. Um, it's hard to explain how uh, preconceptions about a candidate will tell you the wrong things. For example, Daniel, Daniela, 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 that's how us Texans say her name, Daniela, Daniela, uh, she uh, is probably the, mo the singer with the most potential on the show because she could have a hit song real easy. She could just completely blow your mind with a, with, with a specific song because the way her voice is. But if you try to make her be Lauren Daigle, she ain't no Lauren Daigle. Um, so, but the problem with, with Danalia is that she uh, got like ninth place or something in like this Euro contest or some shit. So all them judges are going, well, don't worry about her. She got ninth place once. She didn't even get top of the voice in Europe. And I'm sitting here going, all right, well, uh, sometimes when you got a voice like that, it's real hard to find a cover for you, but man, you find it, you blow everyone's socks off. So uh, I'm guessing that that show's already been recorded and she probably lost. <laughs> she probably went out there and be like, who are you covering now? Uh, me covering Josh Groban. Yeah, I'm gonna cover Josh Grob Groban, you raised me up. Great, let's hear it. Wow, poor decision. All right, so uh, the Ruskies are mad. The Americans are even more mad because they're all suddenly realizing the media is completely rigged and that the media has, spe has specifically ignored me for a long time despite knowing that the government is fascist, which tells me the media is complicit in government fascism. The thing is the Constitution doesn't say that we should hang the media for uh, being fascist. So. I guess the media is going to get get away with it, but I think we should at least make the media do the do the walk of shame. Kind of like what I was saying about that old Kim Jong Un. I guess he shot an 18 at golf. <laughs> I'll go play with Kim Jong Un. Uh, who in in the Korean military knows I shot a 39 somewhat recently with a dub, with a triple bogey? Yeah, they know that type of shit. <laughs> it wasn't that recent. It was before I hurt my hand. Uh, what happened is I, I was golfing at this course I never played at. It was actually really easy. It was in Alamo Heights in San Antonio at the quarry. And uh, the first nine holes, uh, I was doing really good. And I had some birdies. But then what happened is I was on this hole and uh, Taylor Swift's song was playing in the background. <laughs> That's when I got a triple bogey. But really, I didn't even shoot a 39 because I gave myself a triple bogey. I was just like, all right, I'm taking a triple on this hole. Um, all right, so uh, I have this dream of Kim Jong-un playing a round of golf um, with a professional golfer. <laughs> like, what, what's his name? Like, Sak Pu Chu, whatever the fuck. I don't even know. I don't know any Asian golfers, much less uh, Korean golfers. Sak. <laughs> That's not what I called him. All right, so... <laughs> Uh, them, them, them North Koreanos, uh, if, if you want to really convince them that Kim Jong-un isn't God, let's watch him play a round of golf. <laughs> he can play it by himself. I feel like Kim Jong-un would say no, though. I don't think he would even golf if you put him on the golf course. And then you, you put an audience there, and every time he had a bad shot, everyone laughed. It was, it's, instead of the clapping gallery, it's the laughing gallery. The problem is the, the audience would be in danger the entire time. Entire time. Not because Kim Jong Un would kill him, because like he'd want to kill him, but then the military would be like, "No, Kim Jong Un, you can't kill them," because the military would be guarding the audience, or the military would be the audience, and they could all be armed. We could have an armed audience watching Kim Jong Un golf. All right. So basically, uh, when Kim Jong Un has a bad shot, that's when they'd, they'd be in danger. And if the guy doesn't golf very much because he doesn't want anybody to see him, because everyone knows he he shoots eighteen, he gets an eighteen in, in eighteen holes. See, that's the thing about people that. Uh, when they lied about Kim Jong-il a long time ago, they didn't know much about golf. I think what happened is they were like, what does a really good golfer shoot? A 34. Oh, a 34. All right. Kim Jong-il shot a 34. He had four hole in ones. And then everyone goes, no, no, a 34 in nine holes. Oh, no. Now we got to keep up with the lie. And now Kim Jong-un's out there going, yeah, well, I shot an 18 because I golfed more than once. My dad did that only when he uh, golfed, golfed his first time. So now he shoots a lot better. Sorry. But uh, some of us have uh, worked real hard to get to the point that we can actually break 90. It's hard to explain what it means to be a golfer that can break 90 in a tournament.
and then hear some son of a bitch go out there be like, yeah, I'm not 34. Everyone bow to me. Trust me, I am God. And now we're all going to go to war with the person that's actually God. Yeah, uh, that, that's my impression of uh, that old Kim Jong-il. <laughs> I know everyone in North Korea thinks he's the best, but uh, honestly, uh, he, he was like a, a fascist totalitarian. Like, it, it, you don't know it because when the propaganda is pounding you your entire life, you believe it. It's kind of like the American people. Propaganda is pounding them their entire life. They believe the government isn't fascist because the government worships the Constitution. These politicians constantly say they worship the Constitution, but then these politicians, it's very clear they're covering for a government that will murder and frame someone for terrorism. And not, and not just that, like, I'm talking about, like, institutionalized violations of the Constitution. I'm talking about, like, everyone doing it together. And it's like, well, why are they doing it? Well, they're violating the Constitution together as a group because they're fascists. And, and, and they don't, uh, that's why we just got to, we got to kill, like, like, all of them. Like as many of them as possible, because we got to make a statement with this with this execution. Like this is not going to happen to our government again. People in the government are going to fear the people. <laughs>